Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework and JavaScript Special Interest Group Biweekly Sync. It is December 5th, 2019. Uh, it is actually December 5th. I'm always excited when I get the date right because I usually make the slides the day before and usually mix that up. And so our agenda for this call is an update on SharePoint Framework, which uh, will be delivered by me. Vesa is currently in the air flying home from the European SharePoint Conference, which uh, I heard was a great success and a lot of fun uh, for folks attending that. And then we'll have our patterns and practices updates across our PNP offerings. And we've got three demos today, uh, one from myself uh, around some uh, a project preset uh, sample for PNP JS v2. Uh, Vincent has a CLI command to scan uh, for opportunities to externalize uh, stuff uh, within your SPFX projects. And Federico has a really cool example of using a React uh, Teams tab. So excited to see those, and let's jump into our call. And I will apologize a bit for my voice. Um, I have been under the weather now, I feel like, forever. So uh, uh, just doing the best I can with that. Uh, so opportunities to participate in uh, PNP or the SPFX uh, stuff all up. You can always do a demo, love the demos on these calls. So SharePoint framework demos at PNP demos or combinations of those things are always outstanding to see. And I always learn a lot and benefit greatly from uh, seeing what folks out there in the community are doing and how folks are able to uh, use both SharePoint Framework and the patterns and practices resources we're creating uh, to build really amazing solutions. So excited to see those demos. If you'd like to do a demo on one of these calls, please do reach out and let us know, let myself or Vesa know, and we'll get you booked on uh, the soonest call that we can. Sometimes we're booked out for a couple of calls, but we'll get you on the schedule and get you added to the agenda. So just reach out, love to see those demos, and uh, excited to have you demo your solutions uh, along with everybody else from the community. Likewise, you can contribute on GitHub, and you can provide us feedback through any number of means. So uh, contribute on GitHub, you can report issues, submit pull requests, uh, as well as help others with their uh, questions or issues they might be having. So if you see someone with a question and you might happen to know the answer and you can jump in and help them out, that's always very much appreciated uh, by all of us. And uh, just a note, if you're going to report an issue to us, we, we don't love to get issues, but we always appreciate getting issues. But if you're going to mention that uh, some piece of code throws an exception, please do include the exception that is thrown. That really helps us understand what might not be working. And then finally, we always love to hear feedback uh, on what we're doing. So feedback on these calls, uh, feedback on the documentation we provide, feedback where else we can provide uh, help to those of you in the community. And of course, positive feedback is okay too. So if you have something nice to say about the work we're doing, it's okay to share that as well. These are, are your links to get to uh, the various things. So to get to the developer documentation all up, we're in aka MS SP dev dash docs. Then you also have SharePoint dev videos, SP dev dash videos. That will take you to our YouTube channel, which has uh, all of our videos. So all of these calls, the special interest group calls, the monthly calls, as well as a lot of great tutorials on getting started with provisioning, on modernization, on various other things. So definitely check out those uh, for a lot of wonderful resources across uh, all kinds of SharePoint development topics. And uh, as well, the SP Dev Dash issues list is a great place to report all issues with the SharePoint uh, modern project. So check that out. And uh, if you find issues with uh, SharePoint framework or with modern pages or, or anything around SharePoint modern, you can always report them there to the issues list. And that is tracked by the product group. So your feedback is going right to the source uh, that, that can fix it. So that's the place to report stuff there. And then finally, just sort of general open source uh, resources, github.com slash SharePoint, github.com slash PNP uh, are the places to find all the open source uh, resources around uh, uh, stuff from the SharePoint product group, stuff from the SharePoint community, and then the at PNP stuff from uh, the PNP group uh, specifically can all be found there. So updates on SharePoint framework. Uh, latest from SharePoint Engineering, which is actually latest from just me today standing in for VESA. But uh, this slide shows that we do have great uh, adoption and usage that continues to climb for SharePoint Framework across tenants. So you can see uh, 
you know, usage and adoption continues to climb. So if you wonder if it's worth investing in learning or worth investing developing for SharePoint Framework, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, you can definitely check those out. And, uh, you know, it, it's certainly a technology that is continuing to grow, continuing to be invested in uh, both by the community and by uh, the product group teams uh, as, as the method forward for developing on SharePoint Framework and something that we've been hinting at for a while, um, learning these techniques, learning these patterns uh, that exist in SharePoint Framework are really a great way to, uh, or are going to be a great way to develop across uh, all of Microsoft 365 in the future. So we've talked about that a little bit on this call, but so learning uh, in, in this space is really not gonna go to waste. So a reminder, uh, we got a video out uh, on the preview capabilities for SharePoint Framework uh, 1.10. So you can check that video out. Um, that is on the YouTube channel and that is uh, hosted by VESA and it's got uh, the new features that have gone to GA as well as some of the preview features uh, that are in there. So check out that video on the YouTube channel. Uh, the SharePoint Framework 1.10 release, what's included. Looking for new features, uh, those are going to be extensions with the pre-allocated placeholders, SPFX for Teams, SPFX for Teams, actually those are the same thing, but personal app support and then support for mobile apps, and then uh, list notification API has moved to GA. So excited to see that stuff uh, looking or getting into the GA space, and then preview features in 110, uh, query suggestions as a new extension uh, preview feature, as well as support for Office add-ins, uh, starting with OWA, uh, so Outlook Web Client. So definitely check out those preview features. And the road ahead, uh, so native support for Fluid Framework uh, is, is underway, is in process, is being worked into SharePoint Framework, um, as well as support for the store. Uh, I know that's been a long asked for uh, uh, need from the very first days of SharePoint Framework, so making some real progress on getting the store out there, uh, as well as a unified uh, tool chain. This is what I was talking about for all of Microsoft 365, so extending uh, your SharePoint Framework learning across the entire Microsoft platform. Uh, so really, uh, really worth diving in um, and getting in now, as that is going to be the development model uh, shared by a lot of things moving forward. And then uh, the product group for SharePoint Framework is committed to uh, a little bit of a faster uh, inner development loop. So slightly smaller releases, but faster releases, um, which I think uh, is, is a great model and look forward to seeing them move to that, as well as more types of extensions. Uh, so those will be coming uh, across calendar year 2020. Uh, amazing to think we're already um, into uh, or just about into uh, 2020. So flying cars are just around the corner. And as well, uh, we are introducing training, certification and tooling uh, for developers. So you can uh, sort of show off your, uh, your knowledge by taking and getting these certifications and training. So you can do the training and then go become certified uh, through these exams. So this is very much uh, the Microsoft certification program, but now uh, supporting SharePoint Framework and Microsoft 365 development uh, with a specific exam uh, targeting that. So giving you a little bit of a, a way to demonstrate your knowledge and show your knowledge to uh, your company and your customers and what you've done there. And then as well, you can join the new uh, developer program, which gives you an E5 dev subscription, as well as a lot of great sample uh, content and some other great tooling. So if you haven't checked that developer program out, I highly encourage you to. Getting a, a free shot at the E5 SKU is pretty pretty big uh, pretty big advantage and gives you the ability to uh, try out and develop for a lot of the very advanced features, including a lot of the uh, security features. See what you can do with that stuff. So definitely check that out. Um, excited to see that offering that uh, developers are now allowed to use the E5 SKU uh, free of charge. So definitely a, a great benefit for everybody out there. So updates on the PNP uh, client-side libraries. Uh, the, the V2 beta is now available. You can help us test that out. There's a pinned issue at the top of the issues list. Um, we're definitely interested in all feedback, but specifically feedback around bugs, meaning something is broken or not working, or something that was working in V1 is not working in V2. We definitely want to hear about that. We're not looking, uh, other than our identified breaking changes, not looking to break anybody's existing code. 
uh, docs. We've put a lot of time and energy into improving our documentation. You can now view the V2 docs. There's a link at the in the top header bar uh, there uh, on the official documentation or the V1 documentation. Uh, so if something in there is unclear or missing, I know there's still a few things that are missing or articles that aren't complete, but uh, if you find stuff, please do let us know. Docs can always be better. We've put a lot of time into making them better for this V2 release and uh, ho hope to uh, to meet that goal, but also get your feedback there. And then as well, the transition guide. So as you're transitioning your V1 solutions to V2, what steps have we missed? What details can we add to make it easier? Definitely want to hear uh, feedback there. And then, of course, in all cases, please do note your issues related to V2, uh, the beta. That will really help us understand and track it and, and, and fix it correctly um, and avoid any confusion. Support plan mentioned this last time for V2. Uh, we're going to maintain feature parity between V1 and V2 as best we can. So if we add a feature to V2 or add a method to V2, we're going to go back and add it to V1 for three months. Uh, that's going to that clock is going to start in January, so January, February, March. Uh, support for V1 for an additional three months after that, so April, May, June, and then after that, uh, official support will end for V1. Um, but if folks out there in the community uh, find something or want to submit a PR targeted to V1, uh, we'll uh, of course accept that and and merge it in. But that's not where uh, I or the core team will be focusing our energy uh, after uh, that second three month period. So it's about six months of total support for V1 after the V2 release, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll be really encouraging folks uh, to transition to V2 after that. So aiming for release on December 20th. Um, and that would, uh, like I said, we're going to start the support clock, uh, so to speak, on the V2, V1 parity in January, just because that's uh, nice and easy to track. Um, David has dropped the link in the chat for the uh, getting started helping out with V2 uh, testing. So I encourage you to check that out. And if you have uh, you know, issues or comments or ideas, uh, certainly excited to hear those. And then V1 uh, continues to be uh, maintained and released uh, as before for six months. Uh, so targeting the next V1 release for December 6th, that's actually tomorrow. So because of uh, my schedule, that might get pushed a little bit into next week. I've had a particularly busy week this week. So, uh, but we will get that V1 release out, uh, if not tomorrow, uh, early next week. So we'll, we'll, we will have that out very shortly uh, for the December release there. Official documentation, pnp.github.io slash pnpjs. You can follow the hashtag pnpjs on Twitter as well. You can follow me at Mediocre Bowler on Twitter. Uh, and I pretty much just post about pnpjs. So you won't uh, get a lot of spam or, or other things there. Uh, so moving in, uh, Office 365 CLI. If you haven't checked out the CLI, it's a really fantastic cross-platform uh, tool that allows you to manage uh, not just SharePoint settings, but really uh, Office 365 settings and features. And uh, you know, you can actually query things and and add things and manage your subscriptions. It's a great way to script building your development environments. Uh, so definitely a fantastic tool to have in your toolbox. Um, the new release. Uh, for uh, <laughs> uh, externalizing dependencies in SharePoint framework projects. I believe this is what uh, Vincent's going to demo later in the call today. And then as well, retrieving information about Yammer users and messages, as well as some bug fixes and improvements. You can always install the latest version uh, with npm install dash G at office at PMP slash office 365 dash CLI. More information, aka MS 365 CLI. Hashtag Office 365 CLI on Twitter, as well uh, Gitter uh, channel there, Office 365 CLI, and uh, Docs there again, aka MS 365 CLI for all the documentation and getting started uh, with the CLI. And uh, I, I should have mentioned, but I'll mention right now, the CLI as well as PMPJS and and the the controls and. Uh, Yeoman Generator, I'll mention here in a second, uh, all uh, really have benefited from all of you contributing back to the projects and uh, really encourage you, if you want to get involved, uh, either with the CLI or any of these offerings, uh, we all absolutely uh, welcome and encourage uh, uh, pull requests, reporting issues, use the tools, let us know what you think of the tools and how they can be better. So next, want to update on reusable SPFX, SPFX components. So these are two separate libraries. One is a set of property controls designed to be used within your SharePoint framework web parts. 
uh, in the editing pane. So to give you a really great out-of-the-box editing experience, they're styled with the Office UI fabric, blend right into SharePoint, and really give you a jump start on uh, your SharePoint framework development and uh, save you a lot of time in creating a very rich editing experience. And then as well, uh, the SPFX or SP Dev FX Controls React uh, is a great set of content controls for use in the body of your web parts uh, to, to really present information uh, very well to folks and uh, give you, again, a nice out-of-the-box layout. And those would work in web parts or, of course, uh, would, could also work uh, in application extensions. So either way, but those are a great way to present information to your users. A lot of great controls there um, and a lot of great contributors, again, to this project. Um, so there's some names listed there. Uh, I'm not going to not going to read them all, but uh, this has been uh, great to see the growth of this. This started, I want to say, about a year and a half ago, and is already a fantastic set of controls. Uh, save you a ton of time and uh, effort, and give you a great uh, looking and easy to manage experience uh, right out of the box. Uh, for your SharePoint framework projects. So again, if you haven't checked those out, check those out. Another great tool to have in your toolbox in SharePoint framework development. The last uh, PMP offering I'm going to mention before we get into the demos today is the SharePoint framework uh, community yeoman generator. Uh, we just had the 1.10.2 release, and that includes some improvements to the Azure DevOps uh, pipeline, and then as well, Lodash integration uh, for smaller builds and bundles. Uh, and this is a great tool built on top of the out-of-the-box uh, SharePoint framework Yeoman generator. That generator, or this generator rather, will give you a quote-unquote real SharePoint framework project with all of the out-of-the-box dependencies and libraries built in uh, with the ability to add a lot of extra configuration uh, or uh, the ability to add a lot of extra libraries that aren't part of the uh, the out of the box generator, such as Angular, Vue, uh, Handlebars, Knockout, and so forth. And you can easily add uh, a whole bunch of uh, additional libraries, such as PMPJS, or the controls I mentioned before, uh, or the Office UI Fabric, uh, right into your projects and get those uh, you know built right in, save you some time, and provide a little bit more consistent uh, project uh, initiation experience. Uh, as you start your SharePoint framework project. So definitely check out the generator. This is another place that has had a ton of great uh, community contributions to grow it very quickly. Love to see that. Love to see folks jumping in and getting involved. Uh, so absolutely encourage that. So, and uh, on to the demos. Of course, today is the day I have a, a demo to do uh, when I have no voice for it. But so wanted to talk uh, today about uh, something for PMPJS so I want to show uh, this idea. So in PMPJS v2, uh, we very much we have this idea of uh, selective imports, and selective imports is the idea that you can choose which parts of PMPJS you want to import into your project. So this has the benefit of uh, giving you much smaller bundle sizes and limiting what you include to just what you need. So for example, in v1. Uh, it, Everything is attached to the web object, basically. So you imagine web has lists and content types and everything else. And that tree of stuff uh, in, means your bundle gets all that stuff, even if you just want to do some simple operations around uh, webs, for example, or lists. You still end up with the entire bulk of PMPJS in your project, which, uh, you know, isn't horrible. It's not going to end the world, but we could do better. So in V2, we took a lot of time uh, to come up with these uh, this idea of selective imports, and we restructured the entire internals of the library around that. And so uh, what this project is showing <coughs> is this idea that <coughs> it's great that we can selectively import just the pieces we want, but that could be sort of annoying if we have to do that across every file in our project. So we might have a project that has six different web parts. And if I have to have 12 different imports for PMPJS in six different files, that's kind of annoying. We can do better, right? So this pattern that I want to share today is this idea of creating a pre what I'm calling a preset file uh, within your project. So in one spot, 
You can include everything you need from PMPJS. So we're going to include uh, our extend factory method. We're going to include the SP REST class. Then we're going to do our selective import. So we're importing webs, items, lists, sites, fields. We're importing a couple of the objects we're going to need, um, and we're importing uh, this URL format type. And then in this sample, we want to show uh, how to extend uh, the typings, how to extend the declarations. So, uh, so you get nice IntelliSense with the things you're adding via extensions. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on extensions because that's not what this demo is exactly about. But we've got articles on extensions, and this is actually a sample. I'll show you where to, where to find this in just a, a second. But this is actually out there and available for you to have a look at uh, after the call. Um, so we have a, we're going to add a method to web called ensure special list. Uh, just as an example, it's not really actually that special, but I like to think of it as special. And then we're using that extend factory method. So this is a new V2 capability. Uh, we're going to extend the web factory. Sorry, we're going to extend the web factory so that every web we create within our project will have our new method. So we can have our ensure special list method, uh, you know, defined here. And it's a method that takes uh, a couple of parameters. Um, and this is just something I defined. It's a title and a description. Um, it gives us back a promise. And what we're actually doing is then using uh, PNPJS to say uh, this dot list, and we can type the lists in TypeScript using the the this uh, you know syntax. If you're not not familiar with that, it's a way uh, to type the this object in a function. Though you do have to define it as a function, uh, arrow functions have no concept of this. So uh, we're using a function here. We're saying this is, a, is an iWeb instance. And uh, we're going to say we're going to ensure this list. And then uh, we're going to say the first time. So if you haven't used the ensure method for lists, you get back an object that tells you whether or not we created it uh, with that call. And if we did create it, what we're going to do is in a batch, so again, showing off the very simple fluid batching for PNPJS, um, we're in a batch, we're going to add two fields. We're going to add a text field and we're going to add a URL field, um, uh, very cleverly called text field and URL field. And then we're going to wait the execution of that batch. And then we're just going to, that's it. We've created our list, we're happy. And then the other thing we could do in a preset is we can actually export some of the stuff we might need in our projects. Um, so we don't have to import them from PMPJS directly. We import them here one time, and then uh, we can uh, export them from here so we can use them easily. And then we're going to export this SP uh, const. So what this, this is actually creating essentially the root of our Fluent API. And there's no difference from exporting it here versus importing the one from PMPJS. But the idea here, and that what I want to show you, is we then, in our project, so I've jumped over to now my web part code in my project, and this is just an out-of-the-box uh, SharePoint framework web part uh, built using no framework and then added uh, just this PMPJS example code. So we're just going to import SP from our preset. So we're not importing at this point from at PMPJS. We're importing uh, directly uh, just the SP uh, object from our preset. We're going to come in here. We still have to do our setup. But you'll note in V2, we have a much simpler setup model we've added. Uh, you, you can now just say SP setup this dot context. So you don't have to put that uh, sort of uh, object structure in anymore. You still can put this object structure in if you have additional configuration. The, the signature of the setup method has just changed to accept the context. So you don't have to update any of your existing code, but this is uh, the nice uh, quick way to get uh, the context uh, since this is a very common uh, function folks are performing many times. Uh, so as we set up this dot context gives us the setup we need to have the context we need. And then uh, I'm doing uh, so again, no framework. So I'm just creating elements, uh, manipulating them directly, um, adding event listeners, and then appending those. Um, this is something uh, I like to do in demos because I think sometimes folks get very focused on including certain frameworks and frameworks. This is better than that. But sometimes if you have a very simple web part or a very simple application customizer, doing direct DOM manipulation uh, can be uh, uh, a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier, and a little bit faster. And you don't have the weight of, say, including React or Vue or any of these other frameworks for something where I just 
uh, want to have a button that does something, right? And then so you can see now in our button action, we're just calling our uh, custom method we've added to web. So our extension method we've added, we're going to call it. And this gives us very clean code here um, in this example or in this button. Uh, but you could say if this was a method you had to call three or four times uh, across uh, your project, you had like four web parts with a common function. Uh, you've bottled all that functionality into that preset file. You don't have to copy and paste it across. And that's enabled by that uh, extension functionality we've added to V2. So you can very easily include your methods right into the Fluent chains uh, that you're calling otherwise. And then we do a very beautiful uh, DOM element, uh, append child. So pretty beautiful stuff there. Um, and then, uh, of course, we want to see this running. So I'm going to go to my go to my page, ignore all the meetings I'm skipping to be here with you all today, and uh, I'm going to load up my page. And we can see I do not uh, currently have a list called my title. So uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And I'm just going to re refresh this. And I do have a uh, gulp serve already running in the background uh, to save us just a few seconds with that. And I'm going to go try, and this is something I actually learned on this call. Um, I can search in that box, which I think is amazing. So here's my beautiful web part uh, with my very fancy uh, button. I'm going to click that button, and I'm going to assume stuff is happening. And it now says uh, the list should now be there. And now we're going to come in here and refresh this page. And, and, uh, oh, there it is. For a second there, I thought I had somehow screwed this all up. Um, so we can see, but uh, we've got our list. And if I get a gear here in a second, get a gear here in a second, we can go to list settings, or library settings rather. And uh, we can see I've got uh, my very cleverly named text field and URL field. So this is just a fairly simple example, but it's a powerful example in the way that it shows you how with a preset file, we can import all the things we need to once. We can extend PNPJS to include our custom functionality that can be used easily across our entire project. We can export just the things we need. So if we need to import stuff, we can do it within our web part. And then like, for example, we could import web directly from our preset. And then we can call very easily our extension methods right directly as part of our fluent method chaining in the library. So really excited uh, for these capabilities. I think they add a lot uh, to what we can do uh, you know, with PMPJS v2 and what you all can do with PMPJS v2. So I wanted to show you real quick, I'm in the PMPJS repository now. Um, I'm in the dev v2 branch. There's a folder here for samples. And I can go uh, to the project preset sample. That's the sample I just showed you all today. And as well, there's two other samples for creating custom bundles with Rollup or with Webpack. Um, so you can feel free to check these out. And I did just want to mention, these are going to be samples that are very specific to PNPJS. They're showing very isolated techniques for using with PNPJS. If you're doing samples uh, around SharePoint Framework and, and all those things, those should all still be targeted towards the main samples gallery. So we're not trying to move stuff here or compete or anything like that. These are going to be samples focused uh, strictly on showing things we're talking about in our documentation. So these will be samples um, really around demonstrating new PMPJS features. But of course, if you have ideas uh, for samples that might be appropriate for this, uh, for PMPJS v2, um, and that tie in uh, very tightly to our documentation, um, reach out, let us know um, if it's appropriate. We'd love to have those added here. I just want to be clear, we're not trying to, to split the world and create two separate uh, places for people to submit samples. So SPFX samples, uh, you know, dev samples should still go in the SP dev uh, samples uh, repositories uh, there. So I think with that, I get to now stop talking for a few minutes and uh, we can move on to Vincent, uh, but excited to show those new features in PMPJS uh, V2 for you all and uh, look forward to seeing how folks might use those. So Vincent, if you are ready, you can take over. Yes. Perfect. Also uh, share my screen. All right. So uh, that's uh, your 
demo actually is a great segue to mine. Uh, together, we'll talk about the Office uh, uh, 365 CLI new command called Office 365 SPFX Project Externalize. Uh, before we begin, hi everyone, I'm Vincent Biret. Nice to meet you. I'm an um, Office Dev MVP, and I work at 22 Lead, a Canadian-based consulting company, as an Azure and Office 365 developer. If you want to reach out to me, here is my Twitter and GitHub handle, my blog, and yeah, you can always uh, contact me. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. With that, um, well, uh, Patrick already pointed to a, to a problem, an existing problem. Um, SharePoint pages, they already load a lot of things, uh, but are the out-of-the-box web part, the UI, the data, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and each... Uh, additional SPFX component, whether it's a web part or an extension or uh, anything else, adds up to that to, to the page uh, um, size and to the page load time and, uh, well, degrades performances and uh, experience for the users, right? Um, and optimizing for performance is time consuming and it requires a lot of knowledge. Um, and we'll see what, what techniques we have. So if we look at a few examples, that's the load time and the size and the numbers of requests for Vanya uh, SharePoint communication page. It does 195 uh, HTTP requests, transfers uh, more than 60 megabytes of uh, resources, which works well if you're on a desktop, you have a fast connection, a good browser. But as soon as you have either a bad browser or you are on a limited connection like me right now at a conference center, it might not be so great, right? Uh, and and then if you start adding um, a few extensions and web parts and so on and so forth, and if you're not ca careful about what you're doing, well, the number of requests and the size of a page can go up quite quickly. So you want to avoid that in order to provide good performances and good experience for the end uh, users. What solutions do you have? Well, you have the one that uh, Patrick just shown, uh, the selective import, meaning that you'll be really careful at the import time to import only what you need. Uh, and this is great when you, uh, this is actually uh, the probably the best solution if you are on a net new project and you don't need to refactor tons and tons of code. Um, so the problem with that is developers need to be super well disciplined and um, they need to know about that uh, and do it across the solution or otherwise you need to do big refactoring existing solutions. The other pattern we see and which works quite well is let's say you have a couple of different web parts. They all depend on the PNP uh, controls um, and in order to save space and loading time and so on and so forth, well, you create separate chunks, separate modules that you will lo load um, and synchronously. Um, so this is a great technique as well. Uh, it involves refactoring, lots of testing to make sure it loads properly at the right sequence at the right time, um, and uh, a, a pretty high technical knowledge. You can, all, uh, of course, use um, uh, library components if you want with those. Lastly, you have a third option, which is called external. So Webpack and the SharePoint framework have this notion of, hey, this is a dependency. I don't want it as part of my bundle. I will load it from a third party CDN instead. So don't include it in my bundle and load the URL I'm going to provide you uh, from the CDN instead uh, during the runtime so everything is on the page. And that's a great way to decrease the size of your bundle and make sure uh, you hit uh, good performances uh, and so on and so forth. And it does not require any refactoring or any uh, big discipline for the developers or any kind of advanced te uh, technical knowledge. So this is, again, one of the solutions to do that. And I, I'll show how you can improve that experience. So let's jump into the demo. Um, here, you'll see that I have a straight communication site, but I do also have uh, here on, at the top, um, you know, custom uh, navigation because everyone does that lately. I also have at the, on the footer a custom footer bar with just the logo of a company and learn more and a few other components, right? This is great, but if we look at the performances, we'll see that uh, in the network uh, traffic, which I'm already on. If we reload that, everything is being loaded from um, from SharePoint. We don't have anything being loaded from the CDN, and it can actually qu take quite some time because, again, I'm on a conference Wi-Fi at the moment, right? If we look at, for example, the uh, header component, here we'll see that if I 
find the right one. It's pretty heavy, right? We For the header, we just have a, a few links. Well, they look nice. We have a proper CSS classes and the proper icons, and we are, even have a search bar here uh, available. But still, like just for that, we are paying a cost of 153 kilobytes. And the reason is because, again, we do have uh, a, a lot of third dependencies in our bundle. And how can you investigate that and what your bundle Contain Well, there is a great documentation already available on the SharePoint Dev Docs. You'll find uh, an article around about um, a Webpack Bundle Analyzer that will help you understand what's in your bundle. Now, if we look at my project here, for my header, for example, my header is 1.5 megabyte before compression and so on and so forth. But uh, a big part of that is actually the module. 1.35 megabytes is a module. So most of the weight of my bundle at the end of the day today is my um, uh, modules and my dependencies, not my actual code. Um, so how do you do that? Well, if you look at your SharePoint framework um, um, solution here, uh, you will see that you have a config.json uh, file available, and you have this entry, external. So this is where you will tell the SharePoint framework, hey, uh, don't include those dependencies in the bundle you're creating. Instead, at runtime, load those from uh, the uh, CDN. But that can be pretty tedious you know, to scan for all the modules, all the dependencies, uh, know uh, if they are valid or not, how to include them properly, hence the command we're introducing today. We have this new command called Office 365, in, because we're in the Office 365 CLI, SPFX project, externalize, and then you can say, all right, I want a markdown report, and here is the file name I want to give it. You can uh, run it. It will take a few seconds. And what that does automatically for you is it will scan all the dependencies you have in the package.json, see on unpackage.com, which is one CDN uh, that works well uh, out there, uh, if this is available test the dependency kind thanks to the Rancor API, the script check Rancor API, and then suggest to you the proper um, entry for the external configuration. So this is gonna run for, well, actually it's already finished. Let's look at the report here. Um, and you'll see that you will get automatically, if I get this out of the way and that out of the way as well, you get automatically that mar markdown report that tells you, all right, here is your external configuration that you should put. And additionally, if you need to make other changes, like for example, PNPJ as V1, if you want to uh, externalize the uh, dependencies, you also need to add blind require statements here. Uh, so here is what we think you should do and, and, and let's implement it. So um, of course, it's not gonna be perfect. It's only going to do 85, 90% of the job. You might to, uh, need to do some adjustments. So here to save time, I will see, uh, I'll check out another branch. Um, uh, I'm meeting, I, I verified that, I made a, a small adjustments that were required. And if we look at our config.json, we can see that now in under externals, we have all the configuration we need for all the different packages, right? So if now we do uh, run the, uh, and I hope this, this is going to um, execute fast. So if we do run uh, our build and bundle and package solution, we'll see that we'll of course build and bundle and package our solution and also update our report. So let's give that some time to run. Hopefully it will complete fast. Doing a little, a little dancing here on my end. Um, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll move on and, and come back to that. Um, uh, come back to that when it, when this is finished. So basically, what's going to happen? We will have our solution that's going to be much smaller with all those external dependencies outside of the package. While well, it's doing that, and we will uh, then be able to upload that so new solution and that new package to our SharePoint um, uh, tenant and deploy that new package. And what we will see uh, effectively when this is, uh, this finishes uh, is that our package is first much smaller and second. Uh, that it pulls dependencies from uh, unpackage. Apparently, my computer decided uh, to be uh, slow today, probably because I'm sharing my screen with Teams, but this is what, uh, what's supposed to happen. I don't know how much time I, I have left, Patrick. Maybe I can, we can answer some questions if there are any at this point. The question was, was that externalize.stats.html running against a bundle or live through a workbench? Uh, it's... Uh, 
Uh, it's actually runs after, uh, during the bundle period. Um, it's uh, when you bundle your uh, solution. This is when Webpack puts all the bits and pieces of JavaScript together, and that will generate a file for you. So you need to, in order to get that report, you need to run the command I'm just running, which is first build and then bundle, and this is how you'll get the new report. And I don't know if we went through that part already. I uh, it's almost done. Um, so my report should be updated. So I'll open a new tab here. And we can see now that my header, for example, if we look at the header, is not 1.3 uh, megs. It's only 285 kilobytes, right? So we almost divided by six the uh, the size of uh, well for, uh, five the size of the package or of this bundle for this extension, um, thanks to externalizing all all these um, dependencies, right? So now, hopefully, by now the um, the bundling part and the packaging part should be done, which is done. Perfect. Thank you for the great question. I don't know who asked that question. So if we look at that now, if we reveal this in the Explorer, and if we go back to SharePoint Online here, I can go to my uh, catalog here, drop my solution. And what you'll see is it's in French, of course, because uh, I forgot to change the language. But besides that, it will tell me, hey, do you want to replace that solution? Which I will say yes. And now it's saying, hey, you have dependencies coming from unpackage.com. Uh, so you need to trust that, of course. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to deploy that. It's going to take a few seconds, hopefully, um, to deploy. And once we reload the page on that side, once this is done, let's hope this is done. All right, just refresh that. We'll see that here we should see network activity coming from Unpackage, for example. Yes, so you'll see that now I have, for example, Lodash, GSLib, and a few other things like PNPJS being uh, loaded from our uh, uh, CDN instead. And if we look at our header, again, here, our header component, um, which is, uh, here now instead of being 150k it's only 36k so um the performances and the experience for the end users will be much better and much greater and with that before i finish i'll just recap and then hand it over back to to you patrick so what this command does for you first it checks all the dependencies on the package.json then it ensures that we have a cdn uh, version of that available somewhere on unpackage it tests the module automatically for you. Is it an AMD, UMD, ES6, global package, and so on and so forth. And thanks to the Rancor's API. So again, big thanks to, to Rancor. And it tries to obtain automatically the minified version because uh, um, Unpackage might have multiple versions of the same library. So we are trying to make sure that we get the smallest version possible. Um, then it checks that that file actually exists on the CDN. We make sure that we're not suggesting you any dependency that, well, doesn't exist at the end of the day. And it generates the external entry configuration as well as the other file edit suggestions that we might have for you. Um, Big thanks to Waldeck and Velin, uh, who uh, helped me through the pull requests and reviewing the code and making suggestions and so on and so forth. Without them, it would not have been possible. Uh, it's a great demonstration of the great community effort and community work. So again, thank, big thanks to them. And uh, with that, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask any questions. Again, you can try the Office 365 CLI uh, newer version by installing uh, the uh, well the the CLI uh, on your machine. Not here. Sorry about that. I'll go back uh, here. You can find that on uh, pmp.github.io/office. 365-CLI, and then you'll find the uh, documentation on how to use the externalized command. And again, if you do have any feedback or any questions, uh, feel free to uh, open issues on the issue list on, on GitHub, which is taking a while to load on because I'm on a conference Wi-Fi. But yeah, uh, feel free to add uh, issues here. We'll try to help you and fix those issues. And with that, um, I'll hand it back to you, Patrick. I don't know if we have any questions, but thank you very All much. All right, great, great stuff, great stuff. I think there might be a few questions for you in the IM window, um, and you can take them uh, there. Because I want to make sure uh, Federico has time for his demo on Perfect. React Teams tab. Uh, Federico, yep. are you there and ready to go? Yes. 
Uh, hi everybody, my name is uh, Federico Porceddu. Uh, nice to meet you everybody. Uh, I'm a senior developer in uh, Avanad Italy, actually I'm based in uh, Cagliari and Sardinia at the Avanad Advanced Technology Center. Um, you, here you can find my, my contacts if you want to talk with me. Let's start. Um, today I'll show you an SPFX web port uh, user uh, uses to show directly on the site the hierarchy of channels and tabs on uh, of the team connected to the Azure Point Modern team site. Mm, let's see together general needs. Um, general needs is to enable people to access Teams tab without necessarily having to open uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Teams uh, app or a web application. Uh, they were, uh, therefore, saving the step of having to find uh, the team and desired channel. Uh, the result uh, is a, a first track to, towards the Teams tabs, uh, so um, access is happening quickly. Uh, surely this sample is more interesting from a learning and study point of view uh, because I wanted to learn more and understand the power of PMP GS, uh, Fabric UI integration with Microsoft Graph, obviously, in a client side solution. But um, it, could, it could also be used uh, to offer an alternative browsing experience uh, that integrates the model team sites and Microsoft Teams. Uh, let's see what the expected result should be. Uh, is uh, obviously landing uh, into the page. Uh, the web part will show the list of channel of the monitor site, uh, link uh, teams, and nested inside channel list, you will find uh, tabs link. Uh, one of interesting side of this sample is that the web part contextualizes itself on the current site, uh, going to retrieve uh, information through the Microsoft Graph, uh, Graph API. What about feature in uh, this sample? Um, the web part is the following concept uh, on top um, of a shopping framework. Uh, for instance, uh, the use of a PMP uh, graph teams um, uh, package, uh, how to configure point online tenant and, SPF and SPFX solution uh, to allow Microsoft graph call. Uh, course, and finally, the Fabric UI and a component that is uh, simple and nice uh, to use. Um, this is a, a short deep dive in uh, how our model team sites are connected to um, uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, there is basically a property back named uh, Group D inside uh, SharePoint team site. Um, you can easily verify uh, using a client SharePoint object model, PowerShell, or SharePoint online client browser. Uh, so, um, what is Group ID? Group ID is the unique ID of the Outlook 365 group associated to the SharePoint modem team sites, and it also represents the Microsoft Teams ID. We will use it um, to, to make our calls to Microsoft Graph and retrieve all information uh, we need. Okay, what about the solution? We already say that the web part contextualizes itself on the current team, uh, but what about Microsoft Graph API? Um, of course, they are wrapped from uh, the PMP package, um, the PMPJS uh, package, because internally they use two specific calls to Graph. Get all channel from, uh, from a team using group ID, this one, and get all tabs uh, from a channel. Okay, obviously uh, we need a previous call. Um, obviously, before I've been able to, to make this calls to Microsoft Graph from Super Framework, it's necessary to uh, assign the correct permission in API management section of SharePoint Online Administration Portal. In our case, we need to add uh, two scopes uh, to scope, uh, group read all or group read write all. Uh, um, Let's see web port in action. Okay. This be good. Here we are. So we can start from uh, a team, the Contoso Finance uh, team. Um, there are a lot of uh, channel, uh, and for every channel, there are some tabs with uh, like Wiki, Budget Planning Tool is a link, or um, all tab you want to add in uh, your channel. Uh, the web port 
is this one I can add from uh, editing page and start search my web part teams. This one. Okay, perfect. So publish. Perfect. So as you can see, I uh, this is the Contos on Finance website, uh, SharePoint uh, site linked to the Contos of Finance uh, Microsoft Teams, and um, this web report retrieve all channel, including the general, obviously, and for every channel, there is the count of the um, the tabs uh, that are. Um, link it to this uh, particular um, channel. Uh, it's a really simple and easy, but when uh, you click in, um, in one of the this link, for instance, uh, fiscal year budget, okay, so there is a navigation and you can open directly uh, without uh, waiting, uh, without search inside um, the, the Teams, okay. Mm, here you can find um, a small number of teams, but uh, in a real uh, scenario, uh, <laughs> we know uh, who, who use uh, teams. There are a lot of teams, a lot uh, of channel, and a lot of team tabs. So if you are uh, working on uh, this uh, you know, website, uh, it's, it could be uh, useful to uh, have this link directly from uh, the, this web port. Um, let's get uh, let's get ads in uh, in the code. This is the web part. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's start from um, generic helper. I realize using uh, PMPGS. Uh, there is um, this missile get group ID uh, that get all properties. So property back. Um, and a retrieve group ID uh, property. Uh, there are also two methods, get channels and uh, get tabs from channels that use internally uh, graph teams uh, get by ID and channels get, or graph uh, teams get by ID, uh, channels get by ID that retrieve all tabs from a channel. I love PMPGS because it's pretty easy and clean, uh, make calls uh, with all the power of React and, and TypeScript. Uh, so this is the helper and I use this helper, obviously in the component, this one uh, of the web part. Component is really simple, this is a generic message and the nav I use just the group's uh, property and uh, set the state. And in the component the mount event or uh, my, my component, uh, I start to make a recursive call in order to get all channels. Uh, first of all, the group ID, sorry. I can retire my, my group ID. All channels and obviously all tabs from uh, each channels. Uh, then I push inside an, uh, an array and uh, the um, Fabric UI component uh, nav uh, use uh, these properties. So for a first level link, I use only uh, key and um, oh, sorry, only only name and uh, links are a generic uh, array. And for internal link, so tabs I use a key name and the URL and obviously the the target. About the count is just a uh, count of the uh, length of, of of the array. Another uh, if, mm, trick that I use in this web part is to sort uh, in a different way um, because uh, the, the graph API returned to me a result with a different sorting um, compared to the uh, graph, uh, uh, sorry, to the team's gener generic order. So there are general is always the first. Uh, um, the first uh, channel, and then all the channel uh, are in uh, in uh, alphabetic order. So what I did is uh, just uh, make a custom sorter, and uh, I manage the general tab. But pay attention, this is uh, different from every language. Uh, what about permission? This is in the package solution. Um, okay, we have a permission. I just specify the resource is Microsoft Graph and the scope group 
read write all. Uh, so with this setting, I, uh, when I deploy my web part, I can go to the um, SharePoint online admin center and in the API management, I need to uh, trust. So approve or uh, reject the permission, a case approve. Um, in order to uh, make this uh, call and uh, trust correctly, uh, Graph API and make calls from my SharePoint uh, framework web port. Uh, so uh, from a side is, uh, is all. Thank you a lot for, uh, for your attention. Great yeah. demo. Uh, exciting to see that. I think yeah, maybe you have a few questions there in the window, but we're going to jump back to the slides real quick and close out the presentation. So I want to thank Vincent and Frederico for some great demos. Really excited to see that. Um, it really shows off some amazing capabilities. And then hopefully as well, the uh, PMPJS demo I did uh, will provide a little bit of value to folks as well. The next SPFX JS meeting, December 19th, 2019, uh, we will have a meeting that day. And then the next general dev SIG meeting will be on December 12th. So that's next Thursday and then two Thursdays from now for the next SPFX special interest group. So thank you all very much for attending. Appreciate everybody's time. Remember, learn, reuse, and share. And look forward to talking to you all soon. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.